Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Our guest today is Jill Loop, who just left her post as Director of Economic Development for Roanoke County. The county's racked up several big wins in that area over the past few years, but Jill, uh, she's not done quite yet. And Jill, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Gene. Good morning. Good morning. So before we get into some of these wins, You've had over the past couple of years. Um, uh, I just want to ask you. You know, you're, you're moving into a different position for now, a director of tourism, um, assistant director, assistant director of tourism. tourism for the county until you leave. But did you always gravitate towards economic development, or was this sort of the end of a succession of uh, positions for you? I mean, when you you were an 18, saying I want to get into economic development, or were you? No, I never had any concept of ever entering into economic development. Didn't even know what it was back in college days. I was a journalism public relations major, <laughs> and out of college I began my career in tourism. I was in hotel sales. I worked for the Krish Hotel uh, family that was American Motor Inns back in the day, mm -hmm. and that evolved into being the economic development director in the city of Radford because tourism is economic development. It's just another form of it. Right. So I grew my career over time uh, as director in the city of Radford. Then I went to Caroline County, which is just north of Kings Dominion and uh, came to Roanoke 22 years ago. So it's been an interesting journey. It's not something I ever expected to get into, but um, certainly has evolved into a productive career. Right, and I wanted to ask you, um, and uh, it was something you, you said out about, uh, why don't we have a Trader Joe's here? That was one of the things, but you were say, the, it seemed like the, uh, one of the things you wanted to bring up was that economic development is really a complex process. It's political, it's, uh, you know, you, it's based in part sometimes on what community feels about things. Talk about that process. It's not just like, hey, you want to move here? Sure, we're going to, you know, here's some land. But there's a lot involved in these things. And talk about that process. It's a delicate balance between corporate interest, corporate need, community need, community interest, citizen desires, political desires. And it's also a real estate question. If you don't have the right real estate in the right location at the right time for the right project, it doesn't happen. It's, it's like a, you have to find the secret sauce for every project and you have to weave the magic as mm -hmm. you're working with companies. Uh, people don't really understand the complexity that um, is involved in commercial versus industrial versus uh, small business, large business, manufacturing. There's a, a different need for every sector. So we have to figure out how to fill that need, how to uh, navigate those complexities. And that's the art of economic mm. development. And it's interesting because in this valley you have, you know, several localities that are, are all co cooperating regionally, but there's also some competition there. So it's interesting how someone might pick West Roanoke County versus just over the border in Salem and all that. And, and that, that, it seems like that could be kind of tricky. It is tricky. As businesses grow, they are looking for real estate. They are looking for the right real estate. It has to be a large enough site, an existing building. Um, it has to be the right fit for them. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes companies make decisions based upon their real estate needs. And that's not always in the control of any one jurisdiction. So they move around as the real estate is available for what they need. And we often try to promote the real estate that we have, what's available, um, and, and respond to those inquiries, respond to those needs. We don't actively uh, recruit or try to attract companies from other jurisdictions, but when it's a real estate driven decision, um, we try to help businesses as we can. Right, so you've got 50 acres here and it's yep. cheaper yep. and it has the same access to 460 or 81 or whatever, you, you right. might be a better fit. In large part, this is a real estate business. It's driven by the available real estate. Really? And if you don't have it, how are you going to attract them? I think people think you can just do business attraction and they will come because it's a great community. And, and sometimes that's true, but if you don't have the right real estate, they're not coming. Yeah. I'm wondering over the past year or two where, 
I know these housing prices have gone way up. Has property value gone up? You know, what asking prices for properties gone, uh, gone up at the same rate? And is that sort of a challenge? It's always a challenge when you're trying to balance uh, value versus um, investment decisions that companies have to make. A lot of them will be um, ready at one point in time to make a huge investment decision and sometimes they'll pull back when the economy shifts. So then that's again beyond your control. How do you manage projects when the economy is is doing this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the next couple of years, especially, you know, they keep talking about a looming recession and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is that, is that a good time or is that a bad time for business expansion? Are there some companies that take advantage of a recession? Uh, usually we see it slowing down somewhat mm -hmm. uh, during those times because companies aren't ready to pull the trigger based upon uh, what the, the national decision making might be at any given time, the federal government decision making, the recessionary times that we might be entering into. Loan rates. So Yeah, in fact, end of year is often a pullback time. Usually when there's election cycles, that impacts corporate decision making as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're heading into that in November and um, companies will, will just wait. They'll put projects on pause and then they'll reevaluate it come January. I know that at the beginning of this year, activity was really strong. There were projects coming at us from all directions, uh, companies looking to locate everywhere. And then it, over the summer, it started slowing a little. And now we're seeing that they're, they're pausing. They're not going away, mm -hmm. but they're just pausing. And I think it'll probably hit again in January. So do you think that has to do with the inflation rate, Jill, or loan rates, interest rates going up? Or do you, you think they want to see what's going to happen next month, even politically? It's all the above. It's a combination of all those factors. And every company's different. Every board of directors is different. So right. they, they're evaluating based on a number of different yeah. factors. And sometimes it's driven... Uh, we've got to move now because we have need and production capacity is through the roof. We've got to have a new location. Right. But, you know, going back the last couple of years, and we seem to be past that, but what, how, was it, how was economic development affected during the COVID pandemic, during the height of the pandemic? Were, were, the, were businesses still kick, kicking the tires uh, looking at the valley, or did it really kind of slow down quite a bit? It was very slow during that time but because the companies had a lot of need. So our response to that was providing resources through grants and, and programs um, that might be available from state and federal government um, and, and also leveraging the partners that we have in the region to provide services as needed. Mm -hmm. But trying to help them weather the storm was our, our primary focus. We work a lot with our existing businesses. And um, in fact, that's probably one of the things I'm most proud of is that we are very hands-on start to finish. We, we provide um, resources in lieu of compensation and, and dollars sometimes that right. I think they truly value, small and large businesses. Yeah, one thing to ask about that is that it seems like some other states and localities, especially other states, are much more aggressive about the sweeteners mm -hmm. they offer. That seems to be not the philosophy for a lot of Virginia localities. But like you said, are there other ways to make up for that, perhaps? Sure. Um, often there are small businesses who don't have a human resources arm. They don't have a marketing arm, public relations assistance. Sometimes we step in and we hold their hands. We help them connect to the right uh, HR resources, talent resources. How do you have um, an effective workforce and access to those training uh, components that are available, most of them don't understand that and there aren't, they aren't aware of it. Mm -hmm. We show them how they can access those resources. And ironically, we also serve sometimes as their marketing arm through our um, press releases, media relations, um, social media. We will help promote them when it's important and necessary for their success. You know, a lot of sp small businesses especially don't even though, ironically, a lot of times they're the ones that really need marketing, they don't have the budget for it. They don't have the budget, they don't have the resources or the talent and skill. They might know how to run a child care center but, and expand their child care center, mm. but they don't know how to handle um, elected officials, grand openings, ribbon cuttings, uh, groundbreakings. How do we get our word out? How do we tell our story and our message? And we're storytellers. We, we help companies tell their story. Now I know why you were so good at it, because you went to school for journalism and public relations. Journalism, public relations. Yeah. It, it is a lot of um, messaging. It's packaging that message for 
um, an effective positioning of a community, effective positioning of our real estate, and also helping leverage that for our businesses. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been the economic, were you the economic development director? 22 years. In that, as economic development director? Um, I've been with the county 22 yeah. years, uh, started out as assistant director. Actually, I came as the public information officer. Oh, really? Okay. And Amy I was, Whitaker's job, basically. Yep. Okay. I was public information officer for a very short time frame before um, Joyce Wall actually had the assistant director position oh, at that okay. time. Um, she left the county to oh, take the, the chamber, chamber right? position. And I then moved over pretty quickly within three or four months yeah. into the assistant director position. Who was the director then? Um, it was uh, David Porter, okay. it, who was here for a short, short while. Okay. Um, anyway, um, was assistant director for about 11 years. And I've been director now for about 10, okay. roughly. So, you know, I mean, we'll, I, I want to get into some of these uh, particulars, but what, like, what's been the biggest change in over your time in the economic development department, Jill. Biggest change about how localities approach economic development. Has there been a big change? Mm. Um, I think placemaking has become one of the most important things and the biggest change that I've seen. And here's what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. uh, in previous years, earlier, we would focus on quality of life. We would talk about quality of life. We still do today. But placemaking is about building the infrastructure, building what the communities want and need to be successful in the future. And, and quality of place has become a priority for people who want to come here, do, live here, um, do business here, open their businesses. And that includes things like sidewalks, bike trails, mm -hmm. um, infrastructure improvements, opening up uh, areas that have previously been unavailable. Um, you know, I can remember a time when the community didn't want sidewalks. I remember uh -huh. when our government didn't want sidewalks because it meant a lot of expense, it meant a lot of maintenance. Um, that's changed a lot. Now we're building sidewalks everywhere. Right, bike paths walkability. Everywhere. Walkability. Connect connectivity, yeah. Connectivity, walkability, all of those things contribute to to quality of spa uh, place. Green space has become more important. People want to have uh, features and amenities that they previously weren't interested in. And they're getting them elsewhere. Other communities are doing this across the country. So it's, I would imagine a lot of these businesses that are looking for at a locality, they just expect some of these things because that's sort of the norm these days. It is the norm. And if you're not in the game, you're, you're not at the table. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you think we're on County's done a better job of being understanding that in recent years. Is 100 percent. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We're building it. We're leveraging state and federal resources to build it. Um, the county board and administration is behind building quality places. Town Center Reimagine 419 plan. All of those things have contributed to our economic success. Yeah. Since you mentioned it, let's talk about the uh, the 419 uh, plan, Town Center mm -hmm. plan. Uh, I, I live in this area, right near there, and I've always thought, you know, this is in the area of the county that's supposed to be among the most affluent or whatever, not my house, but, uh, but it, it, to me it was under-retailed and uh, there weren't even the eating choices that should have been, and now there's all kinds of stuff popping up, there's more to come. Just talk about that transformation. Well, the 419 plan was a catalyst for a lot of wonderful things that have happened in the last five years. Um, the plan, everything begins with the plan, right? The plan leveraged um, the community. It leveraged uh, property owners. It leveraged um, businesses who might be willing to take a risk and invest in the corridor. We helped um, leverage $60 million of state and federal transportation resources to widen 419 put in those sidewalks, put in those bike paths. Um, and it's also a little bit of fortune that the property, Tanglewood Mall itself, was sold and a new owner came in. That was great timing for us. It was also great timing to um, have their interest in investing in their own property. So because of those things coming together at the right time, we are now seeing the results of it. Um, the county just laid the groundwork for that to happen. The county put in the infrastructure and, and leveraged um, all of our partners and, and brought the community along with us. 
I remember times in the 419 area, Cave Spring area, that people didn't want any development in their backyard ever, anywhere. And, and today, it's like, oh, we, we want that. We want those sidewalks. We want those walkable spaces, safety improvements, transportation enhancement projects. And it's happening now. And we're seeing the results of it because, uh, along with new property owners, they're investing themselves. And, and the other project that's happened is uh, the Fallow Water Square project. Right, which just cut the ribbon we as just, we speak. Yeah. We just cut the ribbon. And Alexandra Boone has said many times, he's the developer for the project, that seeing what's happened in the 419 corridor gave him confidence to invest in his own property and to build a new place that would um, house offices for um, National Spine and Pain Center um, as well as the Long and Foster Real Estate. Right, I actually talked to him at the ribbon cutting and he was, that's the first thing he mentioned is he was excited to be part of this 419 plan. He talked about walkability and all that. You know, Richard Kaywood, your boss at County Edmond was there and you know, we actually talked about uh, it would be great if there was actually a sidewalk right. up there that would connect those people because then they would be more apt to walk to a Mill Mountain Coffee or a Bellasinos right. or a Food Lion, you know, that type of thing. So, uh, but yeah, but Alexander was very excited about being in that. Yeah, um, yeah. well, and, and we're also working on projects, um, multifamily housing projects there that are, what, there's one, 260 uh, residential units now uh, at South Peak. Right, on top of the hill on top of the hill going through a rezoning. Uh, so that's a new multifamily housing project in the corridor and there's some others in the works that... But the Boones want to build near... Uh, is that West County or is that in Salem, near exit 141? It's in uh, West County. Okay, right, right. You know, I wanted to ask you about that since you brought up the not in my backyard type of thing. Mm -hmm. And people always bring up... And I remember about 20 years ago when there were so many you remember like 15, 20 years ago, almost every Board of Supervisors meeting, there was a residential project coming, Old Plantation, um, the one on off Merm and whatever. Uh, and, and it was boom, boom, boom. And then it really died down, but it seems like it's come back a little bit. But, but how do you balance that? Because if you want to attract people and you want to attract young people and they can't afford an $800,000 house, they need someplace affordable and attractive to live if you want to grow business. So. Uh, is it tough for sometimes for planning commissions and for board of supervisors to to tell people, look, we need to do this. We, we if we want to grow and you want your kids to stay here, we need to do this. Well, their decisions are based upon land use in in general. Okay, so they're they're very specific land use guidelines. Right, by right uh, and all. By that. right, there are legal directives on land use decisions and interpretations and, and everyone tries to, through the county's comprehensive plan, we're, we're underway right now with that. That comprehensive plan actually guides land use decisions that Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors makes. And right. It's always a delicate balance with real estate, with a willing investor, with the appropriate land use uh, plans in place, and then zoning. Those are our greatest challenges, are land use plans, uh, that are appropriately updated. I mean, some of that hasn't been updated for a long time, which mm -hmm. is why we're now are you updating. Re you're updating the comprehensive plan right now? Okay. The, in the process as we speak, updating the comprehensive plan is really important, um, as well as our zoning ordinance. And it's many of them are very outdated, so we, we have to invest that time and energy in getting that, that uh, secret sauce right. So it's not always perfect, and you're right about how in the past we had a lot of opposition back in the day to just about every project we right. were to introduce. Then there was a quiet period where you were seeing a lot more support of the community, of citizens mm -hmm. for projects. And, and you still see some of that today, but it's a delicate walk, a fine line, delicate balance that we walk. Right. And um, so it's, it's good to see investors willing to uh, work with the county, work with citizens, try to balance the interest of the community as well as their own business interest. Right, and the thing is if you change the comprehensive plan where maybe there's more by right in it, then it also makes it easier for developers to say, let's check out Roanoke County because we, we may not have to have pitch battles on some of this stuff. Exactly. It's, it's, not, it's not ever easy to uh, find that right mix and 
as I said, it's, it's timing, it's, it's the right real estate, it's, it's a lot of different things that go into that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention some of your awards. I mean, we mentioned the 419 Town Center, I think about six different awards for initiatives over the past mm -hmm. year, several for the 419 Town Center, also for some of the projects going on in the town of Vinton. Mm -hmm. Talk about what those really mean and, and, and what that recognition means for Roanoke County. It's pretty amazing that we actually had six awards literally within a year and a half. Um, it's through the International Economic Development Council, the Virginia Economic Developers Association, National Association of Counties. Um, what that means to us is that it's validation. It's saying these are best practices. What you're doing is in the right direction. It's, it's a model example for others to follow. I presented not long ago to the Virginia Economic Developers Association about our Reimagine 419 plan. Um, other members of our team have also presented to the um, Virginia Association of Counties about best practices on the 419 plan. So mm -hmm. we know that it's working. We, we know that we're having success. And these awards validate the, that these are model programs that other communities can follow. Mm -hmm. So we're very proud of that. Um, I think that's something that the community should be proud of as well. And by the way, we should mention the 419 town plan. I guess there will be some further tra traffic improvements and basically that, cl that ramp on to 225.81, that's going to be changed too. Buckle up literally oh yeah right <laughs> because that construction will begin in 2024 um there's going to be a lot of construction activity redesigning that interchange yeah. but once we get through that process it's going to be so much nicer and the the traffic will flow so much better than it does today yeah. and, and i have to say and i know i talked to you about this before the traffic seems like it's flowing better now than, than they when they first put up some of those buildings because i was really concerned that Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it takes time, and, and obviously we're making adjustments along the way. There are also improvements going on down at uh, 220 that VDOT is, is uh, implementing that will eliminate some of the uh, amount of signal movements along the 220 corridor, yes. and that will keep you. traffic flowing right. a lot s more smoothly than, than it is and has mm -hmm. been. We only have a couple minutes left. I did want to mention some of the, uh, you sent me this whole big list of economic development <laughs> projects, boom, boom, over the past year or so. And what struck me is that, um, you know, like uh, Chili's, Popeye's, Sketchers, Burlington, Cumming, um, uh, Tanglewood, of course, uh, North American, especially Laminations, mm -hmm. uh, Fallow Water Square, Lowe's Distribution Center, that a lot of them, most of them are basically small businesses, mm -hmm. less than 100 employees. And you've told me that's really the lifeblood of, of business growth. It's the sweet spot for any community, especially Roanoke County. It diverse, diversifies your base. If you would diversify your economy, then you weather storms better. The, the great thing about Roanoke County is that we have always had steady incremental growth. For 22 years that I've been here, it's been steady, it's been incremental. On average, you're looking at about $50 million worth of investment per year. Mm -hmm. um, you're looking at three to 500 jobs created per year. Steady, and population growth is the same thing. Kind it's of steady, steady. Yeah. It's, it's less than 1% a year on average. Right. That's the beauty of Roanoke County. Um, it, it helps sustain us during recessionary times, during COVID times, during crisis, um, when you're diversified. You don't go boom or bust. You're not relying upon one industry. You're right. not relying upon any one entity that, that you're beholden to. And uh, we're very fortunate that yeah. we've been able to sustain a lot of those um, downturns with, with um, success. Don't you think that a lot of localities now realize it's kind of better to go in that direction than to put all your money on having a big, big box plant that em employs a thousand people. One hundred percent. In in fact, if even if we tried, I'm not sure we could, by virtue of our land area. Mm -hmm. So we have to fit those projects that make sense for the land that we have, for the real estate that we have. North American Specialty Laminations is one of them. I mean, it's a smaller manufacturer but it's a great fit for the real estate it's a great fit for the community and it's appropriate and you're repurposing a building there correct? exactly right 
which is always an ideal thing. And a lot of the work we do, look at the town of Vinton, it's redevelopment projects. There's going to be more focus on redevelopment in the future. Mm -hmm. You look at Alexander Boone's Fallow Water Square redevelopment project. Sure. Because we're not making new land, we have to make better projects fit the land we mm -hmm. have. Got less than a minute left. I do want to ask you one last question. What would you say to somebody who's 18? They say, uh, gee, I think economic development sounds like fun. What advice would you give them? Oh, wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, have a well-rounded understanding of community. Have a well-rounded understanding of um, what it takes to make businesses successful. Understand real estate. There, Economic developers are um, a diverse bunch of people. We, some specialize in finance, some specialize in economics. You might find some specializing in real estate. Um, it could be marketing, it could be journalism, it could be public relations. All of those things uh, play into what we do. And um, I would say just um, look at the, the whole picture, not just parts of the picture. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Jill Loop, until very recently, was the Director of Economic Development for Normal County. She's still with the county for a while. And uh, Jill, always great talking to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Gene. I'm Gene Morano. This has been Business Matters. Have a good day.